Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Cost of debt after tax interest rate calculation. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote and would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're going to be in the icon on the left-hand side. We're in the practice problems tab down here in the 1117 cost of debt after tax interest rate calculation tab. Also note when using OneNote, you're going to want to take a look at the immersive reader because we have the presentations up top will be mirrored down here with the text files. Same name, same number, text files having transcripts can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in those languages, thereby good complement for the presentations. Closing up the icon, we have our information up top. We'll go to the calculations on down below. We're looking into the debt financing again noticing that as we think about these you're keeping in the back of your mind the financing of the company how to get money to finance the company could either be done in the form of debt or equity focusing in on debt here when we think about debt we have to take into consideration tax consequences which can complicate things a bit because of it so now we have the cost after tax we're going to say is the 10 percent so we're given the cost after tax. It's probably a situation in practice that would be a little bit more unusual because normally you would have the cost or basically the interest rate in practice and figuring out the cost after taxes. This is something that helps you to understand the problem more and is typically something you'll see in a book type of problem to test whether or not you understand the problem more, right? And so then we have the tax rate is going to be the 35%. Remembering that we're typically taking one rate, even though we have a progressive tax system, possibly not the average rate because we make our decisions on the margin, the last decision being at the last rate, possibly being our highest tax rate than you think possibly. So what is the debt rate? Uh, the example debt, we have the 100,000. So we'll do this once again without basically thinking about a debt amount. And, and we're just thinking about the percents without even the need to know what basically the debt is, then we'll take a consideration of the debt and think of it as an example to get it better in our minds. Now, in a prior presentation, we did this kind of the standard way and the, the formula that you want to have in your mind is the cost, cost of debt after taxes, which would be the debt rate. It's gonna equal the debt rate, normally like the interest rate, the rent on the money, the cost of the debt, the cost of borrowing, the cost of having the use of the money, kind of like rent, but interest typically times one minus the tax rate that's going to be our formula now if you plug this in algebraically then here the thing we're looking for is the debt rate or kind of like the interest rate which again a little bit unusual but just it's just an algebraic equation so if we have one unknown and we have all the other knowns we could plug it into our algebraic equation and find for the unknown so the cost of debt after tax is given at the 10 percent. that would be the 10 percent equals the debt rate that's the unknown we don't know that one that's why we call it unknown times one minus the tax rate which we do know the tax rate it's the 35 percent. then you can solve using your algebra for the unknown and figure it that way we'll also do it with the tables down here just putting in the normal table that we saw in the past i'm not going to rework it to calculate for the debt rate first and then we'll rework it basically doing the algebra in the second calculation. So what we had last time is the same problem, the same format in our table, which would be the interest rate. And then I'm bringing into the inside one minus the tax rate. So the interest rate is what we would not know. I put the answer here, but it's yellow just to indicate that that would be basically the unknown at this point in time. And then we got one minus the tax rate. So we got 100% or one. Uh, minus the tax rate, which is 35% or 0.35, the difference being 65%. And so then we know the end result is the 10%. So 10% is the end result. As we can see here, normally then we would be taking the 15.38 times the 65. If I do this backwards, basically, now I'm, I know the 10%. I know the 65 in this case. I'm trying to back into the 15% then we would be 15.38%. We would be taking then the 0.1 divided by the 0.65, and that's going to give us our 0.1538 and so on, or 15.38%. You can then double check it by taking the this number 0.1538 times the 0.65, getting back down to the 10% or 0.1. 
If we were to rework the algebra, then you can do that this way. So that, that just note that if you memorize something in tables, if you like to visualize things in tables, many people, obviously, if you work with book problems, will like writing it out algebraically because you've been doing a lot of math in schools and whatnot, right? But the more people use tables and start using Excel, which will be highly effective to do, you'll start seeing things possibly in tables. That's not, to, not really a bad thing oftentimes. You don't need to rework the table to basically back into the number up top. If you think of things this way, you can even list it out this way. If you're writing it down, if that's clearer in your mind, you could do that. Then if we take the algebra here and we reform it, basically solving for the debt rate, our table would look something like this. And if you, if you look at a typical kind of answer key to a kind of problem you'd see like this in a book, it would rework it to basically this formula. This, this would be all you would see. Just remember, then anytime you see that, you start to think, well, do I have to memorize another formula? And you gotta, you gotta know, like, no. What you do is you're just using the algebra in this format. You wanna be able to recognize that you can plug this into this formula with the one unknown, then solve for it. If you then reworked it to solve, to get to the bottom line being the debt rate would look something like this. We've got the uh, cost of debt after taxes. Then we'll pull in the one minus the tax rate, which is once again, the one, 100% minus the 35%, the tax rate, 1 minus the 35%, or 1 minus 0.35, or 100% minus 35%. That gives us then the 65%. And then uh, we have, again, the 0 0.1, 0 0.1, or 10% divided by the 0.65. That gives us the 0.15384, or the 15.38% about... Then if we plug this, it's often useful to plug this into a table. I won't rework it this way. You could use like a goal seek to kind of rework it in this format if you would like to as well. But I'm just going to plug it back into the table so it can kind of make sense on what this actually means. So let's, let's imagine we have a debt amount of the 100000 and just work out this, these calculations. Let's say we have the interest uh, is going to be the debt times the interest, which we have now found. That's going to be the 1538 uh, percent that's going to be like the interest rate that we have that means that the interest payments that we would have would be the 15 uh, 385 about rounded and then we have a tax benefit related to this so the tax benefit would then be the deduction of the interest the 15 385 and 35 percent of that we would get a tax benefit for so now we've got the 15 385 times the 0.35 or 35 percent giving us a tax benefit of 5385 Therefore, we would have the 15385 interest expense, the rent on the money, interest minus the 5385 means that we have the 10,000 cost of debt after taxes. So there's the cost of debt after taxes. What would be the rate then based on this? Let's get to the rate. We're going to say the cost of debt after taxes would be this number, the 10,000 divided by or compared to the original debt, the 100,000 which would then give us our 10% dividing out the 10,000 divided by the 100,000 gives us basically our 10%. Oftentimes, it's, it's worthwhile with these kind of problems to kind of work in an actual number amount and work this out in this format, which is the way that you would probably be most intuitive to think about just to reiterate what is actually going on when you're thinking about things just in terms of percents in general. Very useful to work these out in Excel. Highly recommend doing that. Obviously, if you're working on test questions and you see things in an algebraic format as opposed to a table format, then it's worthwhile to pull out the old paper and pencil, get ready for the format that you will see this in a test situation. Do the algebra, write it down in that way as well.